Let's take a journey through the solar system. Our first stop is the Sun. Currently, the Sun has undergone a series of cataclysmic events and will completely disappear in any second. Goodbye, Sun. How long will it take the planets to notice? The first planet to notice would obviously be Mercury. At 35,980,000 miles away from the Sun, the citizens of Mercury, of which there are none, would find that the Sun had disappeared in about 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Fast forward a bit to our home planet Earth. Earth is 92,960,000 miles away from the Sun, which means that it would take us about 8 minutes and 19 seconds for us to notice and promptly die out. What about the furthest planet from the Sun? Neptune is 2,798,000,000 miles from the Sun. That is so far that, in fact, it would take approximately 4 hours for Neptune to notice that the Sun had gone out. Using this knowledge, we can calculate c, the speed of light. Speed is equal to distance over time, so if we plug in all the variables, we get speed to be about 186,282 miles per second. That's fast. Now normally we don't have this information to calculate c because the sun isn't dying. So it's a bit harder to figure out what c actually is. There's actually been quite a history of attempts to calculate c. First, Galileo devised an experiment involving lanterns and a stopwatch. However, it was highly inaccurate and it was nowhere near the speed of light. Then, a scientist named Romer got a bit closer with measuring the speed of the light coming off of Jupiter's largest moon, Io. But then, a physicist named Hippolyte Fizeau came up with the most accurate experiment involving measuring the intervals at which light traveled through a spinning gear, which got him the closest to the actual speed. So even if we don't have a lot of information or super precise tools, we can still find C. So after your journey through the solar system, the sun is out, all the planets know, and you're out of fuel. You decide to land on Earth, which is currently being flung out into deep space. As the Earth starts to freeze over, instead of running for your life to the nearest geothermal refuge as your only chance of survival, you begin to think. If it takes 8 minutes for the light from the sun to travel to Earth, when we look at the sun, we are looking at the version from 8 minutes ago. So what if we look at stars whose light takes millions of years to reach us? Well then we're looking millions of years into the past. Sometimes, stars' light takes a billion years to reach us. If a star is far enough, we can look back to the time it was created. So, if you look up into the sky on a dark night, you're looking at what the stars looked like millions and billions of years ago. And some stars may have even been born and we haven't seen them yet. In fact, if a random star popped up in our solar system, it would take us a few minutes before we noticed it. We can even use time to measure distance. Now this may sound silly, but if you think about it, you use time to measure distance all the time. If someone asks you how far away the grocery store is, you might say 5 minutes, indicating that it takes 5 minutes driving in a car to reach the grocery store. We can do the same thing with light, using a light year. A light year is actually a measurement of distance, although it sounds like a measurement of time. Really it is how far light travels in a year. So how can we calculate the miles in a light year? Plugging in everything, we get that there are approximately 5,874,456,800,000 miles in a light year. Whew! So if light has a finite speed, could we go faster than it? According to Einstein's theory of relativity, no. But there's a reason it's called a theory. It hasn't been proven. Could he have been wrong? Is there anything that can travel faster than the speed of light? One classic example of an attempt to break the speed limit is pointing a laser pointer on the moon, and if you flick your wrist fast enough, you could move the laser across the moon so fast that it would go faster than the speed of light. Well, the truth is, if you can move your hand fast enough, in one hundredth of a second, the little red dot will shoot across the moon faster than the speed of light. But nothing here is actually moving faster than C. C what matters is the stream of photons that are hitting the surface of the moon. They are moving at C, but they are hitting the moon in a line that is moving faster than C. 
But the line is not made of matter, so it isn't disproving Einstein, much to our dismay. But what if we replace the laser with a stick? Then, if you flicked your wrist, the stick would be moving faster than C. Well, this won't work either. According to physics, the fastest a force can travel through an object is the speed of sound. That's because each atom needs to bump into the next one to transmit that force. So we can't go faster than the speed of light yet. But could we someday jump into a spaceship and travel at the speed of light? The principle of relativity states that as long as you're moving with constant velocity, the same laws of physics apply no matter where you are. Let's say for instance that you were traveling at the speed of light. If you held up a mirror, would you be able to see your reflection? Well, no, because the light bouncing off of you traveling at sea would never reach the mirror, which is also traveling at sea. But this violates the principle of relativity, because this wouldn't happen if you were in a car traveling 60 miles per hour and you looked into a mirror. The laws of physics have changed when you're going at light speed, even if you're moving at a constant velocity. Let's say when you hold up the mirror, you do see your reflection. Then, to someone watching you travel, the light reflecting off of you would be moving twice the speed of light. This is because the light reflecting off of you, omega, is traveling at C relative to you, and you are moving at C, which means that the total speed of omega is the speed at which it is traveling relative to you, C, plus the speed that you are traveling, also C, which means that omega is moving twice the speed of light. That is impossible. So, in order for you to travel at the speed of light, you must be obeying all the laws of physics and relativity. Now, if you hold up a mirror and you don't see your reflection, then you're not obeying the principle of relativity. But if you do see your reflection, then the light reflecting off of you is traveling twice the speed of light, which disobeys the entire theory of relativity. Einstein said that in order for all the laws of physics and relativity to stand while traveling at the speed of light, we will have to change space and time. Einstein's conclusion was this. In order for someone traveling at sea to measure the same speed of light as someone observing, the person must actually contract in the direction that it is moving. And the moving person's time must tick by slower relative to the observing person's time. So, what would it look like to travel at the speed of light? We'll never know. Because at that speed we would have no length. Time would stop and our mass would become infinite. So that's it. We'll never know what it's like to travel at the speed of light. We'll never know how many stars are actually out there. We'll probably never see anything go faster than the speed of light. But there's always one option left. We can imagine. This video was created by me, Malcolm McSwain, and presented by our new YouTube channel, Thinked. I'd like to give a shout out to Vsauce and Veritasium on YouTube. They were the inspiration for this video. Check them out at youtube.com slash Veritasium and youtube.com slash Vsauce. Until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.